very violent knockouts. Do you ever look back at the knockouts? No, I only enjoy when I look at that, you know. Really? Yeah. Interesting. No, because, you know, we're, we're in a fighting sport, you know, and uh, everybody trains hard to win, and uh, a knockout is the most uh, beautiful thing in our sports, you know. They, they come to the ring to knock me out also. Mm. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, uh, you know, no, I, no nothing. Okay. Uh, if, if I win, when, if I meet again, I try to knock him out even even worse than, than before, you know. Take the Stefan Lecko knockout out of the equation because it was it was brilliant on yeah. its own. Of all the other knockouts you've scored, I mean, you know, knockouts, Ray Sefo, Gladbach yeah. Feitoza, Karaev, Doug Viney, uh, Fujimoto, Alistair Overeem. If you could only remember one of these knockouts as the knockout and how it felt, yeah. your glove connecting, your foot connecting, which is the one knockout that most stands out for you? Uh, I have two, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, my first one was uh, was uh, my second fight with uh, Karayev. Yep. Uh, there, there was a strange fight, you know. I got knocked down and uh, I stood up. And uh, to be honest, when he when he knocked me down, I didn't I I, I didn't remember anything until uh, until Mike was in the ring screaming. Really. I was like. You know what? What happened? You know. Wow. So I, I didn't uh, realize that, that I knocked him out. So because I was still very, but my 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 body uh, and my unconsciousness maybe just reacted on, on, on the moment. Uh, and the second one was against uh, Alistair. That was a very uh, one of my happiest moments in my career. You know because uh, I I was waiting for that fight for like one year one year and I was like. I just hated that guy, you know. Yeah. I was, oh. So, uh, and, and when I, when that happened in, in, the, in the Grand Prix, I was like, yeah, you know, I told you guys, he's not my competition. You know, he was just lucky the first time. So let's talk a bit more about that because you yeah. and I tag team the Alistair on that occasion. It's no secret. I yeah. set it up at the press conference. Yeah, 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 we almost it was the best press conference ever. Come on, yeah, yeah. we did well. Man. We, <laughs> we tore it up. At the press yeah, conference. we were good. We you were know? good. And you came out of the press conference and and. Uh, I was sort of looking for someone to defend K1 because Alistair was coming in saying that he's going to tear through K1 yeah. and the K1's weak compared yeah. to mixed martial arts. Yeah. So Remy stepped up and he called on someone as well. He said, I'll defend the honour of K1. Who else is going to step up? And then I called you up to the podium and you stood there, if I remember, for 30 seconds silent. It's like you didn't know what you were going to say. And then all of a sudden you said, Alistair, if I meet you in the Grand Prix, you won't last three minutes with me. Yes. Had that been something that had already been going through your mind, or was it something that happened there at the press conference? Had you already rehearsed that in your mind, or did, was it just spur of the moment that you came out with that challenge? Because it was amazing that you yeah. challenged him to finish him in three minutes, yeah. and you did. Yeah, you know what it is? It was because he, he came to the press conference, and it was like, uh, you know, uh, all these guys over here, uh, none of them will, will uh, last with me in an octagon for like three minutes. Yeah. And I was like, what is, this, what is this guy saying, you know, is he, is, is he really thinking, because I know he's, 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 he's good for what he is, but he's not, he's not my level, you know. And I was like, hey, this guy, is, 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 he cannot say this, you know, and, and I was looking left and I was looking right and everybody was just sitting and saying nothing. I was like, I, I cannot. So I stood up and I was like thinking like, okay, how should I answer this guy, you know. So I just made the same promise as he did to us. And just telling him that he cannot stand up with me for three minutes in a K1 ring, you know. It was just the moment that made me say that. And of course, after when I said it, I was like, hey, Mike, I'm really going to knock him out tomorrow, you know, yeah. first round. Yeah. So, uh, and you did? Yeah. So you deliberately backed yourself into a corner, put that pressure on yourself yeah. to make yourself perform the next yeah. night. I like the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy. It was a great storyline. It yeah. worked out well. You know, Hate is a very strong word, but you said you, you, you hated Alistair. Is, that, yeah. is the hatred still there for Alistair? No, 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 no. Nothing at all, you know, because uh, I just hate a fighter when I have to fight him, you know. Then I really uh, start hating his, him, his dog, his cat, his wife, his, you know. I'm, I'm that guy, you know. I, I'm heating myself up with all those things. Is that every fighter you fight that's like that? Or was Alistair a special case where you actually hated him more? Yeah, he had maybe a little bit of extra, you know, yeah. because of course he was coming to K1 like uh, he was, he's the, he's the, he's, he's the big hero, you know, and uh, of course he made some good fights, 
but uh, he's not my level fighter, you know, and of course uh, he had a little bit of cockiness, you know, like, you know, these guys are nothing, and I was like, okay, you know, don't worry. How do you explain Dynamite 2009? Yeah, Dynamite was a fucked up situation, man. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, a lot was happening. You'd been disqualified in the Grand Prix, which we'll talk about a bit later. Yeah. Uh, the troubles with the gym, yeah. Mike's gym burning down. Yeah. You only having three weeks to prepare for Dynamite when you're going through so much emotional turmoil, the, the gym and the disqualification. Uh, and you, you know, the world was shocked when Alistair knocked you out and knocked you out so quickly. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I don't like excuses, you know, for, for, for losses. Uh, when you lose, you lose because you choose to fight and uh, you know what the consequence can be. So uh, I'm not making any excuses for that fight I lost, but for me it was a difficult period in my, in my career, you know. Uh, I, had a, I had a rough tournament, you know, I fought uh, Peter in the first, mm -hmm. uh, Zimmerman in the second, and after that I got disqualified against uh, Bonjanski. Uh, when I got disqualified, you know, the whole world was I'm bothered, you know, I was yeah. the big, terrible guy, everybody hated, I disappointed people and uh, K1 should throw me out and they were talking about you don't get your money, we give you extra, uh, you have to pay us and I had all these things happening and I was like, okay, you know, and it was only two and a half weeks before Dynamite. Yeah. Then they called me up like 10 days after the event, hey, listen, you know what, you can fight. I was like, I'm disqualified, you know, I'm like, they were talking about like, you don't fight for a year, you don't fight for like the next Grand Prix, and then they called me like, hey, you can fight, I was like, fight, yeah, when? Yeah, dynamite, to make it up with us. Huh. I was like, okay, make it up with you, I don't know what, you know, I was, and we just took that fight, and they said, yeah, if you fight dynamite, we'll, we'll, we'll forgive you, you know, and uh, we think about it, with uh, how we do a future with you, and I was like, okay, you know, you're fighting Krokop. I was like, no, okay, yeah. no problem, you know in a kickboxing match. I was like, no, good. Mm -hmm. Then they called me a week later, no, it's not Krokop, we're going to be uh, Alistair Overeem. And I remember Alistair Overeem uh, back in his days, I was like, this guy cannot fight, this, he's not a kickboxer. He can, he's... I was like, okay, you know, Mike, this is an easy opponent, just, let, just, just do it. And uh, went back again to Japan and stepped in the ring. After that fight, I made a, a stupid choice, you know, to, to take that fight, but I took it. He knocked me out uh, in, in like the first round. And yeah, is it hard to watch that fight? No, not anymore. Not anymore. If I look at it now, I'm like, you know, no problem, you know. But uh, I think the, the 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 six months after the fight, I still couldn't watch that fight. You know, I was like, damn, how could I be so stupid? You know, to to take it out so easy and uh, take the fight. So can Alistair call himself the true K1 World Champion without you having been in that tournament last year? Yeah, of course, you know, uh, of course he can say that, you know, uh, he, he, is, he, is the, he is the true champion. He, he fought the tournament, he won uh, with the guys who were there at that moment. So uh, uh, it was, my, it was my, my, my mistake that I wasn't there. But uh, he won, he's the champion. Uh, I won't say that he, he, he's not, you know. He's improved a lot though, hasn't he, in his stand-up? Or do you believe he's improved a lot? Yeah, he become better, you know. Could he last past three minutes with you now? <laughs> In his dreams. Really? <laughs> yeah, never. How does it end? Knockout. How? Uh, I don't know. I think the same as before, you know. I think he, I'll punch him out. He's not, a, he's not a guy who can take a lot, you know. He's just uh, very strong. And uh, he got some, he got some uh, good skills, you know. He's not a bad fighter, and I think he will, he can beat uh, maybe 90% of all those stand-up fighters, you know, and maybe have difficulties with five other, with five people, you know. He's a, he's a, he's a top five kickboxer, you know. We can't take that off. We cannot say that he's, uh, he is lucky, you know. Uh, that would be uh, stupid, and that will be uh, false, you know, if I say that. So he's a, he's a top five world fighter, top class, you know. So he's a difficult opponent for everybody, but uh, he's not my, he's not my, he's not my. Class. You know, I can knock him out every minute of the fight. You once hopped in the ring in Japan during a dream show yeah. and said that mixed martial arts was a bunch of hugging and kissing. Yeah. Was that you talking or was that the promotion that wanted you to say that? Because a lot of mixed martial artists around the world got yeah. really pissed off when you said that. Yeah. Was that you saying it or were you told to say that? <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, I just said it. 
and if I said it or I had to say it or uh, you know that was my choice to say it and I was just firing up the situation you know because uh, I knew what was coming up for us it was a big stunt you know because we were not expecting that Alistair would win from Krokop our main goal was to have Krokop uh, back for a K1 fight with yeah. me but Krokop lost that fight and uh, it didn't went how we wanted you know I, I like to promote things you know and yeah. uh, I like to say those kind of things when I have the chance to say it. You fought mixed martial arts once. Yeah. Early in your career. You yeah, lost, yeah. but you were last minute replacement. Yeah. Would you ever fight mixed martial arts again, or it's just not you? I don't know. I, you know, I, enjoy, I enjoy kickboxing a lot uh, and mixed martial arts. Mm. I don't know. I see myself, uh, if, if I have to change sports, uh, I, I see myself uh, rather uh, boxing than uh, step into MMA, you know. So uh, I, li I like the stand up skills, you know. I like the art, uh, the art of boxing. So. Uh, 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 I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't think about it uh, really at the moment. You've done some groundwork though? Have you done some grappling yeah, work? Yeah, 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 a little bit. Because I think I remember George Santiago might have been saying you actually, <laughs> you actually didn't have too bad a skill on the ground. Yeah, You're okay, you could yeah, handle yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, George, uh, I, I train with him uh, sometimes. Uh, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a good fighter, you know. He's, yeah. uh, he's very, very, very skilled on the ground in the gym. He's, he's the best. Uh, I trained with him uh, and he was like, hey buddy, you're, 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 you're really good, you can do something with this, you know. But again, I don't like the higging and the kissing, <laughs> and the kissing you know, so uh, uh, I don't have a plan, you know. But uh, like I said, if I had to make a change, it would be uh, rather uh, boxing than uh, go uh, uh, MMA. You spoke about Crow Cop, it never did eventuate a fight yeah. between you and him. If it was to be promoted, you know, this year, kickboxing rules, K1 rules, yeah. you'd knock out Crow Cop? How do you think that would go down? You know, my intentions uh, are always uh, to knock somebody out. Uh, and uh, maybe it sounds strange, but I can say that I'm a knockout artist. You know, I knock uh, maybe 95% of my yeah. opponents out, so I think I can say it. Krokop is a good fight, you know, in his days he was one of the greatest. I was, I was a fan of him also, you know, he had some great knockouts also on his name. But he went to difficult situations the last, last uh, couple of uh, years, you know. So you don't know uh, what kind of Krokop you get in front of you. Yeah, I, I don't think he would, he, would last it, uh, he, would, he would last long with me, so I think his, his, his mind and his body is too damaged, you know, to uh, stay up uh, and uh, keep the fight up. The Red Light District, Amsterdam's wild and crazy side, and you know that Butter Hurry has a wild and crazy side that stems from some very deep anger issues. When we return to The Voice versus Butter Hurry, I'll probe deep into his heart and soul and try and find out why the hell Butter Hurry is so damn angry. We're back here in the red light district of Amsterdam where things get wild and crazy every night. You know, Butter Hurry's got a wild and crazy side that has led him into a lot of trouble both inside the ring and outside of the ring. He's been disqualified several times and also had some brushes with the law. As you're about to find out as I probe deep into these anger management issues of Butter Hurry to see just what so affected him. I want to go back to uh, 2006, New Zealand. Uh, your ego was running high then again. You came to New Zealand talking the talk, the smack talk. Another press conference I hosted, by the way. We make yeah. a great team, man. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> and uh, you and Peter Graham were scheduled to fight, and you got into a, a street fight at the press conference yeah. that was caught on a lot of cameras. Yeah. Uh, what triggered that with you and Peter? I think at that moment in my life, I had a little bit of... Uh, I didn't really know who, who, I, who, I, who, I, who I am, you know? I was a little bit maybe insured or something and like I have to prove myself against the world and you know I just want to uh, I, I just wanted people to see me you know I was I was just a kid and at the press conference uh, I went to him and I was like talking with him and I, I don't remember what happened I thought he, he, he wanted to kiss me on the cheek or something yeah. or, and I was like hey you know don't what, what you doing you know just tried to knock him out, you know, but I missed twice, so it wasn't it wasn't a good uh, offense. He knocked you out with again one of the most spectacular knockouts yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a rolling thunder kick. Yeah, it broke my jaw. In two places. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Um, how, man, what was that like? I mean, I was amazed you even came back after that. To me, yeah. that was almost a career-ending injury that yeah, but other people would have retired from. Yeah. 
No, listen, if they want me to retire, I think they have to kill me first. Because I don't believe in, uh, I don't believe in giving up. And, uh, but the knockout was very hard. He, he knocked me really out. He, uh, he so it came in the final 10 yes, seconds of a match six, you were winning. Six, 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 six seconds, seconds of a match yeah. you were winning. He throws yeah. one last kick, a yeah. rolling thunder, and boom. Yeah.